This is the second video. The first video that I made was on how to build a garage foundation on a sloping hillside. And in the video I said that I would show you how the rebar would work if I got at least 20 comments that said uh, give me the rebar. And realistically I have to say out of my 100,000 viewers I think I only got about 17 and thought I would make the video anyway because at least I'm getting enough views to the video. And I would imagine by the time you're watching this a few months from now it's probably got over a million views so that will be fine if that's the case so let's go ahead and get started now I went ahead and formed it up now I don't have any braces on it and the forms are just kind of freestanding if this video like I said gets to 150 million views within the next 250,000 years I will definitely do the best I can to make another video on how to form everything up and with that said, and all joking aside, let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at what it would look like without the forms and without the center section that would be part of the slab for the garage floor. And of course, without the foundation walls, you would have rebar sticking out of the concrete. And the reason why I did this was to provide you with a couple of different ideas on how you could do it. And one of those would be to set all of the rebar and then pour the lower footings first. And then after that, it would make it easier to form the next section. However, I don't know if your engine would like that because most engineers are going to want to see this poured with the walls and with that said mentioning the engineer keep in mind that I am not a structural engineer and that this layout might not work for your particular project next up let's go ahead and remove the forms and then the concrete footing and then take a look at the rebar what it would look like on the bottom and again we got it bent at uh, 45 degree angles basically however your angles might be a little different depending upon the slope on the hill and here's an idea of what the rebar would look like in basically the area that's going to have the most weight against it because of the fill behind this particular wall. And here we can see how this rebar is bent and it's installed underneath the rebar that's going in this direction. And that will apply to all of the vertical rebar. It's going to need to go underneath these rebars. And I really don't know if something like this can be installed on top because every time I see it, it's underneath the rebar that's going perpendicular to it. And we're just simply working our way up the wall. And I should also point out that the rebar needs to be at least three inches away from the bottom of the soil and the side. Wherever the concrete is going to be up against the dirt, you're going to need to have it at least three inches away. As we continue up here give you an idea here I just went ahead and ran this one in a different direction to go underneath the two horizontal rebars and doing that just to get a little more strength out of it and then a view there of the vertical rebar and of course here we're underneath the front of the garage door opening and of course the rebar is not going to be as tall here here's a view of it from the bottom and then we will go ahead and take a view from the other side and the rebar needs to lap I'm using number four rebar here and it needs to lap at least 20 inches or 40 times the diameter of the rebar and I do have another video on that you can always go to the website and then check out the building foundation section for a few more tips so again there's what it would look like if it was freestanding let's go ahead and put our forms in and then go ahead and fill it with soil and then continue our tour here and again since this is where most of the weight's going to be we're going to need a little more structural strength on this than we will on the sides here but that's not always going to be the case now here's what i said if you went ahead and you poured this first and you had all the rebar sticking out then it's going to be a lot easier because you can set the form boards for the next section on top. 
However, most engineers are going to want to see the footings and the walls poured at the same time to have a continuous pour to create a monolithic structure. And in case I didn't mention it, all of the rebar is spaced 16 inches on center, and that would be in all directions, going vertically and horizontally. And let's just go ahead and take a look at the top of it. And I don't really know if it matters if the rebar is on the front side or the back side, because I've seen it done both both ways and the longer lengths of rebar are going to be 20 foot long and you can usually rent a rebar bender from your local rental yard and the half inch rebar usually isn't that difficult to bend. Next up let's go ahead and take a look at the inside form board that is a little lower and it's lower because we're going to place the rebar on top of it that we will be using to connect all of the rebar we're going to put in the floor to these bars so that we can create a nice structural tie all the way around the entire garage slab and the rebar that is going to connect to these pieces of rebar in both directions is what we're going to be using to hold the entire top perimeter together. And another thing I need to point out is that these rebars might need to be tied and connected before pouring the footings because otherwise they're not going to be long enough. So for example the engineer might have these going a little longer and you don't want to end up pouring the footings and then jackhammering them apart because you didn't install the rebar deep enough. So again I'm just kind of throwing that out there as another thing you need to think about when you're building this and of course another view let's go ahead and put our next form board on and of course this can be done differently you could always have this as a solid piece and then drill holes for the rebar or you can do it in two pieces but you need to be thinking clearly on how you're going to take this thing apart after it's poured and if you can come up with a better idea then go for it definitely now something else I need to point out in the video that you need to consider will be the slope garage floor slab and in order for me to draw everything a little faster and make my job easier I have everything level here but that's only going to work for you if you have a level garage floor slab however if you have one that is sloping you're also going to need to bring these rebars up to match the slope of the garage floor slab now let's go ahead and take a look at a view from underneath to see what's actually going to happen if you're not paying attention here and you end up having all of your rebar. So here at the front we have them positioned right where they need to be but as we go to the back of the slab you can see where it's missing them entirely and that is not what you want to have. And I wanted to provide you with one more view of the rebar without the forms, even though we're not going to be taking a tour of it. And let's not forget that we're going to need to block off the edge of the footings where the garage door opening is going to be located on both sides. Now I also need to point out that this rebar is going to be a little higher than the top of the wall here. And that's because the garage slab is going to be poured over this area. And I also don't recommend smooth finishing this section right here because the rough surface is going to provide a better bond for the concrete floor once we pour it on top of that area. And of course I can't forget the anchor bolts even though I'm not going to be providing you with layout instructions on that. But you are going to need them if you're going to be framing walls on top of your new stem walls. And of course let's go ahead and take the upper form board off to give you a better idea how this construction method is going to work. Next up let's go ahead and strip the rest of the forms off so that we can get a look at what the walls and the rebar will look like before we add our fill so that we can get everything ready to pour the garage floor slab. And of course after you have everything compacted and ready to go you can go ahead and install the rebar. And this should give you a good idea how we're going to use the rebar to connect to each side of the wall in both directions to create a nice structural tie between these walls and prevent them from moving. And of course this is going to be one of the most important parts of of the project. And here's a view of the rebar, how it's going to connect to the angled bars over the garage door opening. 
and how it will connect to these bars. Now you need to make sure that this is at least the minimum distance for lapping and to provide you with a little bit of insurance. It wouldn't be a bad idea to make this part 30 inches or even a little longer because the last thing you want to do will to have something like this a little too short and then you have a big problem. However, that's not going to be you because you're paying attention to most of the information in this video. And if you have a set of building plans, you followed everything on those building plans and now it's time to pour the finished slab. And of course that brings us to the end of the video. And again, I would like to point out that your project might require different layout, different sized rebar, and even additional rebar, especially in this area down here. So with that said, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. 